it's happening. We are finally getting into months worth of empties. just realized I have something on my brand new t-shirt. Of course I do. Of course I do. Anytime I wear white, who's with me? Anytime I wear white, first day. First day, it has to already be inaugurated with some sort of a stain. It won't be Natalia otherwise. Hi everyone, it's that time. I have been talking about this time for what feels like months and months now. I am fed up with the amount of trash in my apartment and I am finally getting around to filming my giant empties. And this, this is from 2022. This is not even the empties from this year. So that tells you that I am extremely committed and dedicated to saving my empty, but clearly not very committed but clearly not very committed or dedicated to actually filming them. So I need to change that. Like I need to designate a bucket and the moment it is nearing full, just film and empties so that this doesn't happen again. I mean, these things just accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. And I guarantee you by now, I probably don't even remember what I thought about half of what is in that bag, but we're gonna see. We're gonna see how I do, what I can tell you guys about all the products that I've used up in the last few months of last year before we jump in really quickly for those of you that are new hi and welcome my name is natalia i'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty i'm doing a year of discovering what is already in my collection both for makeup and skincare and if i am bringing something in i'm trying to be more intentional about it so you could say i'm kind of on a bit of a low buy so if you are interested in following along this journey with me then i would love it if you would subscribe and join our family here for those of you that are returning thank you as always so much for watching and for all your support and let's jump into this bag of empties because you know we're probably going to be here a while with the size of that bag Yuck. so this is so yucky so so yucky oh my goodness Okay, I've laid everything out in front of me because I don't want the rustling of the bag. I don't even know where to begin. I don't think there's going to be much rhyme or reason to this. I'll try to sort of put it in categories, but I don't promise. Let's start with some big chunky things, which are hair products that are sitting here in front of me. I have three different things, three different bottles from Briogeo. I have this Curl Charisma Rice Amino and Avocado Hydrating shampoo that i have completely used up i thought this was nice but nothing special and definitely not worth briogeo's full price i have other briogeo products that i really really enjoy but this was just a okay and maybe on like a super sale or if i found this at tj maxx or marshall's i would give this another go but i'm certainly not going to go out of my way to repurchase this one however this is something that i do like to have and um, it is pricey, so I don't often have this on hand. I sometimes will get like the little ones because I've even found them at TJ Maxx or Marshalls, actually. Speaking of, I have the small one right here. So this is the Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Coconut Oil Micro Exfoliating Shampoo. I really, really like this product. It is very gently exfoliating, like you almost don't feel the little beads, but there's something very refreshing about it. It has a little bit, even though it's charcoal and coconut, I would say there's definitely a minty smell to it and you feel it kind of in your hair as you use it because I don't know, do they have like a menthol type thing in here? There's too many ingredients for me to look through really quick. Oh yeah, here we go. Peppermint oil. This has tea tree and peppermint oil in here. So and that's probably why it has that slightly refreshing tingly sensation. I really enjoy that. And as you can see, I've gone through the full size. I've gone through the little mini and I have another one of these little minis in my whoop, in my bathroom right now. This is maybe something I would consider. I have to look through and see how many shampoos and conditioners I have at the moment, but this is maybe something I would consider actually purchasing during the upcoming Sephora sale, um, which by the time you're seeing this, I'm sure would have started. I don't know though. Maybe I should look into seeing if Briogeo has better sales on their actual website instead, but I really do enjoy this product. actually don't see any more hair care surprisingly enough in front of me i don't know how that happened i could 
wouldn't have just used that up in four months or however much this is. Although I don't wash my hair that often, so it is possible. All right, let's go through and talk about some cleansers. I see some cleanser things happening here. I went through this Erno Laszlo Hydrotherapy Cleansing Oil. This was quite an old product in my collection. I'm sure I bought this at a TG Maxx. Erno Laszlo is very expensive if you just buy it full price. And I thought this was an okay oil. I did not really enjoy it all that much. I felt like it left a little bit of a residue, which I don't particularly enjoy because then that means I'm just going to have to cleanse it with something else. I did finally use it up, but this took me a long time, probably because I didn't really enjoy it all that much. One that I did like was this Inky List Fulvic Acid Cleanser. It was very gentle on my skin. I have dry skin. A lot of cleansers strip my skin, and this was, I think, more of like a gel consistency, if I remember correctly. I did go through it fast. That was the only downside, but I thought that it was a really nice, just basic, everyday cleanser. This is not something I would use to take off my makeup, but I, in general, do a balm for makeup removal, and then I go in with a cleanser just to, again, get the remaining residue or whatever leftovers. So I, this I could use for second cleanse, but definitely on makeup days, this would not be my only cleanser. But I think I kept this in my shower, and like I used it in the mornings. And I believe I actually repurchased this from the Inky List during their holiday sales like their black friday sales because i did do a haul for you guys at some point and showed you all the inky list products that i bought and i think this is actually a cleanser i do have in my collection again i haven't gotten around to using it again but i will and um hopefully i'll enjoy it just as much as i did the first time another cleanser that i liked and i cut into because i couldn't get a lot out is this squalene cleanser or square lane cleanser from the ordinary again another pretty gentle cleanser this one if i remember correctly had a little bit more of a creamy consistency and not a gel kind of like in between a gel and a cream it was not very thick but it had like a little bit more of a milky texture to it and i thought it was another really solid good everyday non-stripping cleanser so yay for that and another cleanser that i really liked is this milk makeup this milk vegan what is this called i think it's just called a vegan milk cleanser i don't know if they make this anymore i found mine at tj maxx or marshall's i haven't seen them there since if i had i probably would have picked up another one this is also more of a creamier consistency, thicker than the other two cleansers. A really nice non-stripping cleanser, which is really all I want from my cleansers. Really like this one. Have to look into see if they still even make this because if they do i maybe would consider picking this up i know they also had moisturizer in this line that i don't know if i actually ever got to try i kept wanting to for years and um kept putting it off because i just have so much skincare and if they have discontinued this line then well boohoo i never got a chance to try it but i would definitely consider repurchasing this cleanser if it is still available all right a cleanser i enjoyed a little bit less it had a fairly strong like a soapy scent and this is the super clarify cleanser with clarifying niacinamide from elf i didn't dislike it I, I there's another one yeah this one is just more soapy the other one i'm thinking of i still haven't fully used up that's the one that has the citrus scent and that's the one i actually enjoy less this was okay but while the elf is possibly a bit cheaper than let's say the inky list or the ordinary Although those are two pretty affordable brands and e.l.f. is getting up there with the prices. Like they've definitely not the e.l.f. that I remember from, you know, a decade ago. So yeah, if price comparison is not that huge, I would never choose this over the other two. I would definitely go for the other two, but this was okay. This came in like a little kit where, you know, you got to try a few little sample sizes from e.l.f. skincare and I was just curious and I used it up clearly, but I wasn't wowed. I have been on a cleanser kick lately. Like even now I have 
have a few in rotation. You get to see my reviews in these empties videos. So a cleanser either does its job or it doesn't. So I've never really considered doing dedicated videos to something like that. But if you would want me to come back and tell you about the cleansers I'm currently using, which I believe are all different from what I'm showing you here in this video, let me know. I don't know if there's anybody else out there that is as much into cleansers as I am. I feel like over the past year or two, I've really gotten into cleansers before I kind of could care less. As long as it took my makeup off or cleaned my skin, I was okay with it. And now I think as I'm aging, my skin is reacting to more things. So maybe that's why I seem to be paying more attention to how the cleansers are affecting my skin. Okay, some other skincare things. Actually, let's get the body wash out of the way. This is, I think, either my last one or second to last one of the Cora's shower gels. I've loved these for like two or three years now. I used to find them at TG Maxx. You can still even see the rubbed off sticker. I think I might have just a teeny tiny bit left of my very last one, but it's at my best friend's um, apartment because I do occasionally stay there and it's been there for a while because obviously I'm not there every day. But yeah, as far as here at my place, I haven't had one of these in a while. This is from quite a few months back. I used this last one up and I haven't actually looked in to see if they still make this because I have a feeling they would be too expensive for me to buy on the regular. So still on the hunt for a body wash I really like. I would probably be okay paying like up to maybe $15 for our shower gel. So if you know of any that I should look out for a sale or any in that price range that you've really enjoyed, I would love some recommendations because I'm using up some stuff I found at TJ Maxx that's not this. And right now I'm not very happy with it. I'm just using it to use it. So if you have any recommendations, please leave them down below. I would love to try some new ones. Okay. Um, my deodorant, I always use this crystal mineral enriched uh, deodorant roll on. This is the unscented, which is what I prefer. This has no aluminum and it's paraben free. It's, um, I believe like mineral salt, salt based, and it's just a roll on. I'm considering trying native. I keep hearing really good things from a lot of either my friends here in the beauty space. I'm just not really one for scented deodorants usually. And I feel like with native, I've tried their unscented years ago and I still smelled and sweat and all of that. I don't know, I'm kind of weary of the scented ones. I haven't used a scented deodorant in probably a decade, if not more. I just, I don't know how I would like it and I'm not sure I want to commit to a whole huge tub of a deodorant if I don't like it. I keep going back to this for now. Uh, cream. I use this pretty much exclusively as a hand cream. I think I already went through another one that will be in my next empties, which I might as well just film because it's another bag. But yeah, this is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream Intense Hydration. I love this as a hand cream. I wish I actually had had some right now. I should order some during the Sephora sale because my eczema my eczema has been really doing its thing, but I really like this stuff. It's not irritating. It doesn't like, it kind of kills the itch a little bit and it really moisturizes. So I use this on my legs as well after shaving. Some serums, the Sephora C plus E, so vitamin C plus E super serum, the ultra glow serum. It was okay. It, it was okay. I remember I, went through it pretty quickly. It was quite watery, if I remember correctly, but I don't remember this giving me some sort of a special glow that it promised or anything like that. It didn't irritate, it didn't hurt my skin, but it also is one of those products that is very forgettable for me. I'm not gonna go out of my way to repurchase this. This Myzon Snail Repair Intensive Essence was quite nice from what I remember. Um, there's nothing in there. I think it was on like the thicker side. So when I think essence, I think more of like a liquid and this almost felt more serum-y to me. One of these products that was pleasant to use, but it's almost like an unnecessary step. I feel like. If you guys are into essences, tell me how do you use them and what benefits do you see? Because there's been very few essences 
that I have enjoyed using so much that I feel like it actually enhances my routine. Whether that was a sensory experience or an actual like physical change or some sort of a benefit like extra hydration or whatever, I, I just feel like I can do that with my serums and moisturizers. So if you are into essences, I would love to know more about okay, the pharmacy filling good hyaluronic acid plumping serum this i really liked this was a little point perk at sephora and it came actually together so i might as well mention this with the pharmacy honey halo cream this little baby i loved this cream does it still smell like honey not really because i do clean out my bottles i'm considering i have too many moisturizers though so i really shouldn't consider her but i am considering in the next pharmacy sale or the Sephora sale, although I feel like pharmacy's website tends to have occasionally better sales. I'm considering getting this because I really, really enjoyed this moisturizer and I even liked this plumping serum. Less so than the moisturizer, this is sort of one of those products that I feel like was just a hyaluronic serum. I tend to like most of them because I do like hyaluronic acid, but you know, it's hyaluronic acid. But this, this stuff was really really hydrating, smelled really good, and I liked the texture of it, which for me in a moisturizer sometimes is important. Like I like thick moisturizers because I'm a dry girl, but then if they become so thick and goopy and greasy that they don't melt into my skin, then that becomes a problem too. Obviously also depends on the time of the year, but either way, this I liked. I tried this Clinique Fresh Pressed Daily Booster with pure vitamin C 10%. I bought this, I think at a CCO and there was I guess some leftover, which you can see by now, gross, turned since it is vitamin C. I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. Was it the best vitamin C serum I ever used? No. I think to this day, and I'd be curious to retry it now that I'm a few years older, but to this day, as far as just standouts in vitamin C, I would have to say the Drunk Elephant is still my number one. I do like the Paula's Choice, which I'm using right right now but it's not my absolute fave and i also used to like the ola Henriksen one but that one i used before drunk elephant and then i remember once i tried the drunk elephant that sort of blew it out of the water i would say the clinique is similar to the drunk elephant but it's still not up to par with that one would love to hear what are some of your vitamin c recommendations because once my polish choice runs out i'm gonna have to replace that soon and drunk elephant is expensive i wish i could afford it but right now i really don't think i can so if you have any other recommendations that that are a bit more cost effective, I would love to hear about it. Okay, I have a bunch of small moisturizers, like travel sizes, that I used either when actually traveling or just because I wanted to get through some of my minis. This Garnier Skin Active Moisture Balm, the antioxidant super moisturizer. I remember this was a gel cream and I remember thinking it was okay Oh, it still smells. It was okay, but I didn't like the scent. It was too strong. It reminded me a little bit of kind of like the classic men's cologne, a little bit mixed in with like soapiness. It was not my favorite scent. The texture though was fine. I mean, it was a gel cream and moisture balm. Was it moisturizing enough for my dry skin? In the summer, it would be, yes. I think I used this in the fall and it was still okay. Um, this I really liked. This is the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I'm sure this was a point perk or something. This is one of those baby sizes. I really, really liked this. I liked how smooth the texture was. It was actually moisturizing. Would I pay Tatcha prices for it though? No, even if I could afford it, if I'm gonna go that expensive, I'm gonna go La Mer. And I know La Mer is one of those brands that is a bit controversial because some people really think it's way overrated and way overpriced. And it's possible that a lot of their products are. I don't know. I've tried very little from La Mer because of course of the price point, but this came in like a 500 point Sephora perk in a set of a bunch of little La Mer minis. And I mean, when I say mini, I mean mini, look at this. This is a Tatcha Mini and this is a La Mer Mini. Yeah, just to compare, we'll talk about it next. And here's the Drunk Elephant Proteini Mini that they were giving out as part of like a birthday gift. So La Mer means mini, skewel, 
when they say mini. This is the original creme de la mer, and that is what I swear by. The original creme de la mer just works with my dry skin. I know it doesn't work for everybody, but for me, it really does. If I could afford this stuff, especially in the winter time, I would totally use this in the winter time. There's another La Mer cream that I tried recently that a friend of mine was kind enough to pass along because it did not agree with her skin. And I'll talk about it in, a, in my next empties. I didn't like it as much though, just upfront. The original creme de la mer is what I have used in the past. I have splurged a few times, just not in quite a few years. And when I saw this point perk thing, even though it was 500 points, I jumped on it because I really wanted to retry it and see how I feel about it. And I still feel the same way about it. Absolutely love it. If it ever goes on some sort of a super sale where I can snag it at like a CCO or something, totally would. Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. For the price, not worth it. As a birthday free gift or whatever, adored it. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed this. It's not like a super moisturizing cream, nothing like the Creme de la Mer, not as thick, not as hydrating, but for like change of seasons or summertime, love this. I just, Drunk Elephant is expensive, which is why a lot of times, even if I try things in a mini, I don't end up repurchasing not because I don't want to, but because I can't afford to. So there's that. Okay, some sunscreens. These guys I bought at TG Maxx and I made a rush to try to use them up before they expired last year. I can't remember when they expired, but I do remember trying to use them a lot. This is the Josie Moran Argan Daily Moisturizer with SPF 47. I really liked this stuff. I think one of these I didn't fully use up and the other one I did. And I don't know, I gotta look if this product is still made. I think when it first came out, I tried it once, but back then I was still new to skincare. I didn't understand the benefits of sunscreen and I hadn't really tried any other sunscreens. So I thought that it was too heavy and I didn't like the texture of it. But now going back and comparing it to a lot of other sunscreens I've tried, I would have to say this is one of the better ones that I have tried for sure. I think it sinks in pretty quickly. It doesn't leave a huge white cast. Yeah, if I have a chance to use this again, I totally would. Not sure how much it is. I know Josie Moran is a, also a pricey brand, so I have a feeling I would not go for this at a full price because this is pretty small. This is only a half an ounce. So again, don't know if this is even a full size. Bought these at TJ Maxx, as I mentioned, and there they were very affordable. Would have to look into the price range before I decide whether I want to actually repurchase it or not. And of course, go through my other sunscreens, but I would consider it if the opportunity came along. This is a sunscreen I really didn't like. In fact, I think it has still that much in here. This is the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 30 for the face. It says lightweight, non-greasy feel, three essential ceramides and niacinamide. It's a mineral sunscreen. I can't remember now what was the deal with it, but I think it was too thick, too goopy, too white. I did not like this at all and this by now expired in january of this year anyways so i'm sure that also had something to do with me tossing it i guess that technically wasn't quite an empty but whatever oh i found another hair product but it was rolled up so huh, no wonder i did not talk to you guys about this this inspired me to make quite a big purchase from jvn this past holiday season when they were doing all the holiday sales this is the complete air dry cream i swear by this stuff now when i wear my hair curly whether i am air drying it or blow drying it with a diffuser this is what is in my hair love this stuff already repurchased i have the the big mama of this enzyme peel cleansing powder from amora pacific this was such a teeny tiny baby that i think i liked it but it was like two uses and i think amora pacific is a very expensive brand so i don't know if i would commit just based on two uses even though i do remember liking those two uses but i think i could find other things that are cheaper i have so many like little tiny things here like masks just samples i don't know honestly if we want to go through all that i guess i can try to quickly skin and pharmacy advanced anti-aging therapy glycolic peel pad this was a cvs brand i don't even know if it still exists it was you know one of those glycolic 
peel pads and it was fine the one thing i liked about these is they unfolded and they were quite sizable so it really covered all of my face with no problem i could even take it down the neck but yeah i think i just wanted to use it up because i knew i had had it for a long time way fine to medium hair treatment mask i'm sure i took this traveling i always save packets like this for traveling and i'm pretty sure it was okay but it was a one-time use so what can i tell you from that why am i even bothering showing you these i don't know well maybe this is why this lancome advanced genifique concentrate this youth activating concentrate yes it's a teeny tiny size but i got a few uses out of it and i really enjoyed this stuff so i believe it's quite pricey i believe it was in the ulta 21 days of beauty sale but i tried to not buy practically anything in that sale so i stayed away from it but maybe in the future south main under eye gels i like under eye gels in general these i used up because they were old these i believe were subscription box gels it was a one-time use it was like those thicker kind oh they're still even in here they were nice okay a bunch of masks dr jart soothing hydra soothing hydra one of these is old packaging one of these is new packaging i love dr jart masks so these are always a hit for me i buy them at tj maxx or marshall's they used to be the box i think has ooh, how many does it have maybe four or five in there and they used to be 11.99 or 12.99 at tj maxx and marshall's it has gone up to 14.99 but it's still cheaper than buying them full price this korean brand that i will never be able to pronounce correctly this is the high moisturizing essence mask pack this was i believe part of like a little care package gift from a student a korean student uh well his mom i really liked this one i remember whichever ones she gave me and this was definitely one of them i really really enjoyed so i should actually take a picture the only thing is it's sticky and disgusting i don't know if it's from this mask leaking or something something else but i should take a picture and look this up and see if this is maybe on yes style and how much these usually go for because i would consider repurchasing this um i had it it's a foot mask i used it i think it's one of those is this one of those peeling ones no this is just a moisturizing one uh, was it deeply moisturizing for very long no but if i was committed to actually using these more often probably wouldn't hurt i just don't uh, my favorite dr jart mask of all time is this the ceramiden facial barrier mask which reminds me i haven't masked in a while i really should oh and one more of these one more of the soothing hydra so i told you guys I really like that and then i have an erin olaslo soothe and calm sensitive hydrogen mask this is one that comes in two parts and it is that thicker well it's a hydrogel mask that sort of says it all it's the thicker material kind of similar to those under eye patches i showed you earlier really like this mask but again erin Laszlo is super expensive so unless i'm buying this at tj maxx or marshall's which is exactly where i got this i can't afford it um lord jones whole plant formula cbd body lotion i took this on some trip with me and i absolutely love this stuff I only got to use it once or twice and I should look into this because even though I really like my first aid beauty it'd be fun to use something else for a change and also to compare prices and I really really liked this body lotion okay the rest of the samples I think are makeup NARS Laguna I mean I have NARS Laguna and I think I used up the sample just to use it up it's a little orange for my very pale skin but I like NARS Laguna. Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation Stick, I think. Did I actually finally do a video on all of my Westman Atelier? I think I did. And I, of course, only used up the very lightest shades. And I remember liking it, but not loving it. I only got to use it that one time. There was very little product in here. And I think I even mentioned in my video that I can't really have cohesive thoughts based on one-time use. But I think on my dry skin, I just didn't feel like it looked hydrating or glowy enough. It was a little too flat. 
NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I used this in my NARS video sometime from last year. Fell in love with this little sample so much that I finally got a little mini. I mean, I've known about this concealer for years and years and years because I have been watching YouTube for a very long time. So of course I remember when this concealer was one of the top concealers everybody would use and I kept wanting to try it and kept putting it off and then finally I got this little sample when I placed a NARS order and I was like, oh, here's my chance to finally try it. And I did like it. And I did go ahead and already purchase the, I didn't buy the full size, I got a mini. Another product that I really, really enjoyed, but of course this is really expensive, the Yves Saint Laurent Touche Clot, another product that has been talked about for many, many, many years. And maybe one day I will splurge and get it. This was in one of my videos too. This is the love Prairie Skin Caviar Essence in Foundation. And granted, the sample was quite old, so maybe that had something to do with it. But I tried this and I did not think it was anything special. And I can only imagine how much, in fact, in that video, I think I looked it up how much this was. It's like some astronomical price for that product that I would never pay. Okay, there's a couple of other samples here in front of me that, to be honest, I remember nothing about. So we're just gonna skip right over those. Let's get into some makeup. I used up my Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist and I really liked it, I have to say. I think I've tried, did I try this before? Years ago when this was first hyped up. No, I think this was my very first time finally trying it and I really enjoyed it, but it's so expensive, so expensive. And then speaking of Tatcha, the other product that I used up is my liquid silk canvas. I had this little size, really enjoyed this as well, really did. If I didn't have a gajillion primers, I would seriously consider repurchasing this and maybe one day I will. Speaking of primers that I've always liked but are no longer around now, the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I have always really liked this one. I have to see if I have any more if this was the last one. This may have been the last one. Just kind of a bummer but you know I'm glad I actually... Sirens. And yes, me finishing my coffee from like four hours ago at one o'clock in the morning. I'm glad I got to actually use it up. A little baby size. This is the Becca Skin Love. What is this called? Glow Essence Glow Nectar Brightening Hydro Complex. I guess this was supposed to be skincare, but I think I used it as a primer and I couldn't get anything else out. The little pipette wouldn't reach low enough. So that's why it looks like there's still a tiny bit of product. I was going through these Skin Love products and Becca products just because they are older and Becca is no longer around. This feels like it has stuff in here. So I guess I must have not liked it. I think it either turned the smell or it was just too strong for me. Maybe that's what it was. This was the Brighten and Blur Primer. Yeah, I can't tell if maybe something was off with it, but if it's in my trash means I didn't like it. I decided to declutter a bunch of lip balms that I no longer used or no longer liked. So I have a Baby Lips Dr. Rescue, I have a Nivea Kiss of Smoothness, and I have this Korean lip balm. I mean, I've used all of these quite a lot, but like I never used any of these up and I just knew I'm not going to. My NARS Anita that had gone off smells off and I have replaced her since. I used up my Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. This has been one of my favorite lip liners for a few years. This I believe is the second one that I've used up and I do have one more in my collection. This Becca, what is this, in Pearl. It has since separated. I don't think it was like this when it went into my empties, but Either way, disgusting by now, and I had pretty much used it up by then. It, there was a little bit left. A Bite Beauty. This is the Matte Cream Lip Crayon in Pastille. I was not gonna go digging. This is, this is all I had left, and considering how old it was, I think it was in my Project Pans two years ago or a year ago, and I finally pretty much used it up. 
Um, why did I get rid of this? This is the Kat Von D lipstick in Bachelorette. And yes, this is still Kat Von D. I think it went off is what it was. Yeah, it smells already a little bit off and I guess maybe the taste was off. So there's that. And then I have a bunch of mascaras. Rare Beauty, really enjoyed this mascara. One of my favorite things about it is it does not flake onto my face, which a lot of mascaras do, but this one does not. So yay for that. Guys, I know everybody likes this. Is it just me? I hate this mascara. This one does flake on me. It definitely flakes on me. I don't know what it is, and this is not the first time I've given this thing a shot. I tried it years ago. I just really don't like it. I really don't like it. I do, however, like this Milani uh, highly rated anti-gravity mascara. This one just, I think by the time I put it in my empties, um, changed consistency, like dried up too much to the point where I didn't feel like it looked as good anymore. This Lorac Royal Treatment Primer and Mascara Duo. This was old to begin with. I think it's also went into some sort of a project pan or some such thing. I used up what I could, but it dried up extra quickly once I opened it. This was such a bummer because I had been waiting to try this Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara for so long and they went out of business and by the time I got to the sample it had been dry. I tried using it a couple of times but honestly it was just too dry for me to even bother so I never truly got to experience the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. And then a Too Faced Better Than Sex which is always a fairly okay reliable mascara for me. I have always a sample or two lying around because they come in everything. This is one that starts off pretty good for me and then as it gets drier and drier it does start flaking so. And then the last thing I have to share with you guys is some fragrance. I have three little minis. I wish I remembered more about these as far as what the scent profiles were. To be honest, all I remember is did I like it or did I not? So the Giorgio Armani C Passione, I thought was pretty good, but it's not one that I need to run out and buy. If I get another sample, I'll gladly use it. But I think if I remember correctly, this was too floral. I don't I'm so terrible still with scent profiles. I need to learn, I want to learn. But if I remember correctly, this was a little too floral for me, but not enough to deter me from using it. I still used it up and I enjoyed using it. One that I really liked was this Rag & Bone Bergamot. And I wish I remembered now what it smelled like, but I remember really liking it. So I would like to look this up. I mean, Rag & Bone is a pricey, fashion brand. Do I remember correctly that this is owned by Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen? I don't remember. Maybe not. In any case, really liked this little sample, so would like to do some more research. And then there's the Ellis Brooklyn Myth, which I did enjoy. If I find anything, I'll put it on the screen as far as the notes of this. This is definitely one that is in all of their samplers and is available, so you could probably go into a Sephora and give it a sniff if you guys are curious. But that was one I did like. If I remember correctly, it's more clean and has a little Little bit of a soapiness to it. Not off-putting because sometimes soapy perfumes and clean perfumes are not really my thing. I usually am more into woodsy, deeper, sultrier, or more gourmand type scents. Oh, this is one that I really, really like. And in fact, I bought a second one of these that I think is almost empty now too. This is Juliet Has a Gun Pure Ink. And I should seriously consider just buying a full size because I keep buying these little minis because of course the full size is expensive. This is one of my favorite lighter warmer weather scents. I absolutely love this pear ink fragrance. And then my all-time favorite, which you guys would have seen if you watched my big haul video of like all the Black Friday holiday stuff that I posted a few months later. This is the Elizabeth and James Nirvana bourbon. I have two more large bottles like this now and I'm so happy about it. This has been my signature scent for many years. I absolutely 
love this fragrance again if i can put some notes up on the screen for you guys because i am terrible at describing fragrance i will and with that i have finally gotten through my 2022 empties of course this is not the entire year of 2022 this was probably like the last three or four months but yeah so that means I've got one more big giant empties video to do for you guys that are gonna include January through April. And then I will be caught up and then we can finally start doing empties videos that are not a trillion years long and have a gajillion products in them. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm sorry if I was not very detailed about some of these products, but it's been a while. So really it kind of boiled down to, oh, I remember I like this or oh, I remember I I didn't and I couldn't really tell you too much more about like the scent and the texture and how it felt on my skin just because it's been a long time if you have tried any of these products I would love to hear your thoughts what do you like what do you not like if you know of other comparable things to some of the things I've mentioned and if you in general just have any recommendations for me especially with the Sephora sale happening and me unfortunately hitting Rouge last year so therefore getting my 20% this year then I would love it if you would let me know down below about all of those things. Other than that, a one more reminder to please subscribe if you haven't already. I hope that you guys are all doing really, really, really well. Thank you so much for sticking it out with this super long video. Hope that you guys are continuing to stay safe and healthy. Take care of yourselves and those around you. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys. How am I going to take a photo? No idea.